Continue to write off the D-backs at your own demise because Game 6 proved once again that this team has heart, they have resilience, and why you can never say a postseason series is over until it's over. You are Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Listening to who? Always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and my graphic designer, so please check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com to see all of my latest work. Thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms, so please continue to tell your friends. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, for today's show, we're going to be talking about can Brandon Fott step up once again in segment number three, questions and adjustments I have for the D-backs heading out of game six, entering the final game of the NLCS. But before we get to any of that, we, of course, have to give our instant reaction and discuss what we saw in that game six performance by the D-backs because round of applause to the D-backs. Everyone, not everyone, all the Philly fans in my YouTube comment section on YouTube have been saying, this series is over. You're going back to the trap. The D-backs are losing in Philadelphia. They're losing at the bank. And it hasn't just been Philly fans. It feels like the whole baseball world rode off the D-backs after their Game 5 loss. Because even Jeff Passan, who was supposed to be impartial, unbiased, was tweeting after the D-backs Game 5 loss. This series is over. And my motto, my mantra when it comes to sports, when it comes to sports and specifically postseason series, I have this crazy philosophy. Hear me out. The series ain't over until it's over. And I believe that because, guys, this isn't my first year watching sports. I've watched baseball, I've watched the NBA, I watch football. You go back to baseball and basketball the last few years, you know how many series I've seen with team down two games and nothing, or down three to two to come back and win. Even in football, of course, they don't do series, but how many underdogs have you seen over the last decade beat the favorite, right? Beat the team that they're not supposed to beat. That happens all the time in sports. And so I just don't understand why the D-backs were so discredited in this, not just the series, but also being down two games to nothing to the Phillies, being down three games to two, heading back to Philadelphia. I don't understand why the D-backs were so discredited. I do understand from the perspective of this Phillies team was super dominant and seemingly unstoppable at home this year because logically, I do think that makes you know some sense. The Phillies, if you look at their home run differential at home this postseason, I think it's the best in MLB history. Look at their run differential. I think it's the third best in MLB history. If I'm uh, reading the graphic correctly that I saw, if I'm remembering the graphic correctly that I saw on the broadcast earlier, I mean, just look at the numbers the last two postseasons for the Phillies. Pre-World Series, been absolutely dominant. The Phillies have been, like I said, unstoppable at home. So logically, I kind of understood why people were feeling pretty confident for the Phillies with them heading back home up in the NLCS. But at the same time, logically speaking, you also should have had a little faith in this D-backs team. A D-backs team that took down and swept a 90-plus win Brew Crew team in Milwaukee. A team that went into LA, took two games off the Dodgers, then went home for Game 3 and destroyed them with four home runs in a single inning. A team that, against this Phillies team, was down two games to nothing, battled back at home. Yes, they lost Game 5, but even heading back to Philly, down 3-2, to two, how could you just say, in absolute confidence, that the D-backs versus Philly series was over? That's why I just don't understand all the people that had all these absolutes and platitudes after the after the D-backs game five loss, 
I just don't get you. You can keep riding off the D-backs, but to your own demise because the D-backs stepped up in a big way in Game 6, and I hope that they can do it again in Game 7. But let's talk about who stepped up in a big way in Game 6 because in Game 5, the D-backs desperately needed Zach Allen to step up in a big way with him being the ace of this team, and he was not able to do that. So they had to turn to Merrill Kelly, who I said is probably the most trustworthy pitcher the D-backs have going right now. And you can see why, because Merrill Kelly, absolutely dominant against this Phillies team today. Five innings, three hits, one earned run, eight strikeouts. Did he walk three guys? Yes. Were, were the three walks to Harper and Kyle Schwarber? Yes. I will take walks to those two guys. I didn't want Merrill Kelly pitching to, the, to those guys anyway, so I'm glad that those guys got walked. Merrill Kelly had basically his whole arsenal just on tap tonight. Like When you look at the breakdown of pitches from Merrill Kelly, 25 four-seamers, 21 sinkers, 14 change-ups, 11 sliders, 11 cutters, and 8 curveballs. Merrill Kelly was using the whole arsenal tonight. And going into that Philly stadium, Citizens Bank Park, one, it's already a hostile environment, arguably the best environment in baseball. And then number two, after the comments Kelly had about it not being as loud as the Venezuela WBC game, like you knew Philly fans were going to be rambunctious and obnoxious at Merrill Kelly. And Merrill Kelly just tuned out all the noise all the distractions, and was able to lock in on these Phillies hitters, attack the strike zone immediately. Yes, he may have, you know, stayed a little, stayed away a little bit from the Schwarbers and the Bryce Harpers with some of the breaking pitches, and, you know, you can't just throw in the middle of the zone against those guys, so I was okay with the walk in those two, but Merrill Kelly was also able to generate some strikeouts against those guys as well, so good job by Merrill Kelly. We needed a special legendary start from Merrill Kelly and maybe I don't know if I'll call this start legendary but I definitely think it was special we needed to see one of the best postseason starts in D-backs franchise history I think Merrill Kelly is going to be on the short list because going into this game I needed one of those elite desperation back against the wall starts that we've seen from some pitchers in D-backs history Back in 2011, Game 3, facing elimination, Josh Colmenter, 7 innings, 1 earned run, 6 strikeouts. Game 7, Kurt Schilling to win the World Series, 7.1 innings pitch, 1 earned run, 2 strikeouts. Randy Johnson, Game 6 World Series with the team down 3-2, to two, 7 innings, 2 earned run, 7 strikeouts. Merrill Kelly didn't go, didn't pitch as deep into the ball game as those three, but in terms of the way he looked in terms of the effectiveness uh, effectiveness of the pitches he threw he was absolutely dominant and to be honest some of those starts that those previous D-back starters had were probably not against a vaulted Phillies lineup like this where you have superstars up and down the lineup so elite stuff by Merrill Kelly in this one we really needed Merrill Kelly to step up in this one because not only because it was game 6 back against the wall but also because right we were coming off the bullpen game not too recently. Couldn't really use the relievers heavily in this one. And also, we haven't seen the D-backs offense get to those opposing starting pitchers. So we kind of needed this game to be a pitching duel because Aaron Nola and those other Philly starters have been so dominant in the NLCS. So you didn't know what you were going to get from that D-backs offense. So put even more pressure on Merrill Kelly, who delivered. But thankfully, the D-backs offense was able to step up, and they got it going early. They knocked out Aaron Nola. We got back-to-back -back bombs from Lords Guriel and Tommy Pham, two pending free agents for the D-backs, trying to make some money, and I'm hoping the D-backs pay at least one of those guys. Not crazy money, but I would like one of those guys back on a little short-term one- to two-year deal. We'll see what happens. Everyone hit the ball well in the lineup, created a lot of opportunities. Outside of Christian Walker, every starter in the D-backs lineup got a hit. Bullpen was utilized perfectly, like we discussed too. We talked about on the podcast yesterday, the D-backs were probably were going to go with their best foursome from the bullpen. Ryan Thompson, Sal Frank, Kevin Ginkle, and Paul Seawalt. We said it was either going to be Thompson or Sal Frank that came out first, just depending on who was at the plate. And it was Thompson, and then it was Saul Frank, and then, of course, it was Ginkle and Seawald. Executed perfectly and exactly like we called it. 
You can keep riding this D-backs team off if you want, but guess what? This Z-backs team just keeps proving everybody wrong. They keep proving the haters wrong. And with Game 7 in Philadelphia, I'm once again not going to write the D-backs off and keep an open mind as we are on the precipice of their second World Series in franchise history. Now we'll talk about some questions and adjustments I have for the D-backs as they head into Game 7 at the bank. But if you need tickets at the bank, the best place to purchase tickets is Game Time because Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind when you purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know exactly what you're getting without the hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets as well. That's why Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the best place to find last minute ticket deals. I'm the person for concerts that does not want to see the opener, so I'm always buying my ticket a little bit after it starts just so I can pop up and just see my man Drake. So if you need tickets, Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And don't forget to catch every D-backs pitch on their hometown broadcast when you download the Sirius XM app and search up Diamondbacks. Now let's get back into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast and let's talk about some questions and adjustments I have heading into Game 7 because some things that I want to discuss, some things that I liked and didn't like from this most recent Game 6 for the Phillies that I think that they might need to change or continue to do. Um, The first one that I want the D-backs to continue to do that I saw from this game was keep your pitcher out there, your starting pitcher out there, if he's dealing. Merrill Kelly, for the most part, was able to key, you know, was able to stay out there. Yes, he was done after five innings, but that was because he was at 90 pitches. I think if he was at like 82 pitches after five, I think he might have stayed out there. I think it was because he was already at 90 and because the best quartet of relievers wasn't used yet i think that's why he was taken out after five but brendan fought is dealing the way he was dealing last time you have to keep fought out there he's been the best pitcher we've seen against this phillies team and his last two starts have been really good and so if you're tori lovello listen i know brendan fought struggles that third time through the lineup i know what the stats say i know what you want to do as a manager, you want to stick to your game plan, but if Brandon Fott's out there dealing once again, just keep Brandon Fott out there. How about this? Run back the same lineup that we saw today, but move Walker down. This D-backs lineup was really quality in terms of creating run scoring opportunities and then everyone just getting a base hit because if you look at this d-backs lineup from today outside of christian walker every starter in the lineup got a hit and it was just really nice to see because this d-backs offense has kind of been struggling this whole series especially early in these games and the offense today was able to string together multiple hits able to string together sequences and everyone was affected that's the most important thing from the top of the lineup to the bottom of the lineup it felt like everyone was at least taking uh you know a, a piece a lump off the opposing pitchers for the philadelphia phillies so it was nice to see that the whole team was involved and we need to see the team continue to be involved because we need a complete effort to beat this phillies team they are so deep so stacked and you just can't beat it with the top of your lineup you're going to need the tommy fams and the lord's Guriel to continue and seeing fam in the lineup huge boost paven smith out fam in immediately back-to-back bombs of fam and lord's Guriel. now the question is if you're going to put righties you know we had moreno walker fam and Guriel. if you're going to go four straight righties i would argue walker should be the last righty of that four and maybe you even put A guy like Alec Thomas above a walker with the way he's swinging the bat. Also, you mix up all the righties in order. Like, if you want to drop, it's kind of crazy to say, but if you want to drop Christian Walker down to, like, seven, like, 
could you be mad with that decision if you went like Carol, Marte, Moreno, Guriel, Fam, Alec Thomas, and then like Christian Walker? Like, I kind of think that is the best lineup that the D-backs could throw out right now. The way Christian Walker is swinging the bat, I just don't like it. I do like how he was patient at the plate, was able to draw a couple walks. I do like that, but I still need to see that big Christian Walker knock in the clutch. We haven't seen it yet. Maybe game seven is the moment and the opportunity for him to stay, uh, for him to um, get up for that kind of moment. I do want to see the D-backs continue to use their team speed as well. Keep running as much as possible. We saw the D-backs have more steals in the seventh inning than they had all series long. Marte had a steal. Walker had a steal. Thomas had a steal. Perdomo had a steal. We still didn't get the Corbin Carroll steal. I want to say it's going to come to game seven. I want to say it's going to come in game seven. I I just don't know. I like to see the D-back wreaking havoc on the bases and we saw some bad throws down to second base we saw the d-backs finally putting pressure on these phillies defenders to make throws and they kind of struggled in this one so let's see that team speed once again force this philadelphia phillies defense to make plays on the diamond and for the d-backs i want to see continued great defense from them because defense has been such a calling card for this d-backs all season even in the postseason and i think against this phillies team I, I think the Phillies defense has been better than this D-backs defense because I think there's been so many opportunities where we could have cut down a Phillies runner on the bases. It was either a bad throw home, a bad throw down a second that would just skipped in or Gabriel Moreno couldn't make the scoop. Like Whatever the reason may be, I just feel like the D-backs infield defense making plays on the bases just hasn't been that strong this NLCS. And we saw a spectacular play by Gabriel Moreno to cut down a runner at second base in today's game. Need to see the continued defense in the next one. Want to see the starters continue to get knocked out early, preferably for the first time this series. We saw a D-backs offense knock out the opposing starting pitcher early. Aaron Nola gave up four earned runs. He was knocked out early, thankfully. Now, can the D-backs continue it against the Ranger Suarez? We'll see, but I would love for this D-backs offense to get going early and tap into that Phillies bullpen. And I would also like this Phillies offense to come through or runners in scoring position because despite all those hits, despite the five runs that the D-backs were able to put up, they were just not good with runners in scoring position in this game. They were one for 10 with runners in scoring position and they had multiple opportunities with a man on third and less than two outs and they just did not come through in this one. We're going to need the D-backs to just be better in those situations come through runners in scoring position. Thankfully, the Phillies were not able to either. One for seven were runners in scoring position for them as well, but so many opportunities for the D-backs who have made this a 7-1 ball game, 8-1 ball game. Just tack on some extra insurance runs in this one. You're always scared when you see the Harpers, the Schwarbers, the Turners come up to the plate. You can never have enough runs against those guys so it would have been nice for the d-backs to put on a couple more insurance runs they weren't able to get it done in game six but hopefully game seven they can do better than one for ten or runners in scoring position now we'll preview a little d-backs versus phillies game seven brandon fought versus ranger suarez coming up in segment number three but if you want to bet on who's going to win game seven and who's going to head to the world series you need to go to FanDuel.com and place that bet because October baseball is back and you can make your postseason debut with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Join FanDuel today and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to create your new account. Then you can get in on the action from the first pitch until the final out. Bet on everything from strikeouts to home runs to who will win the game. And if you don't want to wait till the end of the game to get a W, predict what will happen next in the next at bat with quick bets. And listen, when I'm on FanDuel, the thing I like to do is the little same game parlay. Take the D-backs over on runs. You take the D-backs money line. If you did that today, I think you would have hit and came home with a little money in your pocket. So for game seven, best believe 
we're riding the D-backs all the way to the World Series. So step up to the plate this postseason with $200 and bonus bets guaranteed. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And don't forget to catch every D-backs pitch on their hometown broadcast when you download Sirius XM app and search up Diamondbacks. Now let's get back into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. Let's discuss if Brandon Fott can step up once again and come through for the D-backs because Brandon Fott kind of needs to continue the trend of turning into Randy Johnson because Brandon Fott has been fantastic in his last two postseason starts. The last one, of course, was against this Phillies team when it felt like this Phillies offense was unstoppable. We saw those first two games against Philadelphia, against Zach Allen and Merrill Kelly, of course. And it's like, if those two guys can't get it done against Philly, how is anyone going to get it done against Philly? And Brandon Fott just laughed in our face because he went 5.2 innings pitch, nine strikeouts, two hits, no walks, no earned runs, no home runs, no hit by pitches, like an absolutely clean line by Brandon Fott. But that's something he's done in his last two postseason starts because even that game three against the Dodgers didn't pitch as deep in that one because we knew first on trouble he was getting yanked. But still, 4.1 innings pitch, two hits, no walks, no earned runs. Like he's been elite in his last two postseason starts. And Brandon Fott is going to have to keep it going in a game seven. It's insane how much pressure he might put on himself, how much pressure he might feel because this is win or go home. This is game seven to go to the World Series. But for Fott, I need him to not feel any pressure. That's easier said than done. But this guy is a rookie. Don't put too much on yourself. Don't overexert yourself. Do what you did last time against the Phillies. And the D-backs will be in position to win this game because the last time against the Phillies, Brandon fought. I mean, you look at the numbers, fantastic. You look at the pitches he threw. The fastball was working for him. The sweeper was working for him. And he was able to generate 17 whiffs in the last game. 40, 47% of the time, he was able to generate a whiff. If you look at the contact percentage on the pitches he threw, super low as well. Like, they weren't able to really get good contact off that. They were swinging and missing at a lot of the pitches thrown by Fott. He was keeping the hitters off balance, and he was not afraid to attack the zone at all. Like, when you're looking at the Harpers and the Schwarbers, like, those are home run hitters. Brendan Fott being the righty he is, we know about the home run tendency he has, but the last time against the Phillies, we did not see any of that. So if Fott can do that once again, just look like Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling, Love Child once again in this Game 7. Channel some of their energy, their spirit into this game. And if you can do that, the D-backs will have a chance to go to the World Series. But on the other side, we're going to have to kind of figure out a Ranger Suarez, who is a really good pitcher, but he's not Aaron Nola. He's not Zach Wheeler. He's a really good number 3 starter, but... He is someone that can be had. He did have an ERA north of four in the regular season. This is not some elite starting rotation member. I have a lot of respect for Ranger Suarez. Don't get me wrong. But he is someone that has potential to have a bad game. He's someone that has been really good this postseason. You look at his last three starts. Only one earned run allowed. In the last game against the D-backs, 5.1 innings pitch, no earned runs, and seven strikeouts. So it's going to be an uphill battle against Ranger Suarez, but what I saw from the D-backs in game six against Aranola does give me confidence that maybe this D-backs offense has woken up and maybe they can battle and slug it out with the Phillies in game seven because game seven could be an offensive slugfest depending on how the two starters pitch. Of course, I wouldn't be surprised if the offense woke up for both teams and were and, and it just comes down to whoever scores the last run wins this game. I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is a game where eighth inning, ninth inning runs are being scored to decide this game. And for the D-backs, I mean, you're going to need the offense to step up and preferably knock Ranger Suarez out the game early because, like I said in the previous segment, 
Phillies didn't use any of their best relievers in the game six. They only used Michael Lorenzen. They used the rookie. They used Craig Kimbrell. They used Soto. Like, they just put their worst relievers out there, kind of conceding game six just a little bit. So, you're going to see the best Phillies relievers in the next one. Sir Anthony Dominguez. You're going to see Jose Alvarado. So, the D-backs have to be ready for that. That's why it's that's why it could be crucial for this D-backs offense to knock Ranger Suarez out early because if you're down like 3-2 entering the 6th or 7th inning, you're going to see those best you're going to see the best relievers out the pen for the Phillies and that can make it really tough later in this game to get some runs. So, going to need more runs early than late, I think in game number 7. And two people that can hopefully provide some of that offense Two people that we talk about on every podcast because they've been struggling this series. But Corbin Carroll, he looked a little bit better in game six, but still hasn't been that elite Corbin Carroll and still hasn't gone going on the base paths. We need to see the speed from Corbin Carroll. Would love to see him start the game with a big double, get him on second. And then, of course, Keto Marte will come up. Keto Marte. I have more faith in him than I have in the sun rising tomorrow. Ketel Marte slash line right now after that game, six victory, 375 average, 400 OBP, 625 slugging. And I think he's going to have a damn near 400 career postseason average after that game as well. So if Corbin Carroll is able to start off with a double, I think Ketel Marte is going to bring you home. And then Christian Walker just needs to do something in one of these clutch scoring opportunities. I just have no faith in him. He's swinging at every strike. The high heat gets him every time. I just hate the way Christian Walker looks at the plate right now. So if one of those two guys steps up and delivers in a big way, it will feel momentous for this D-backs offense. And most importantly for this D-backs offense and this D-backs team in general You just have to play stress-free baseball. Play some fun baseball. Don't put any pressure on yourself. I know it's win or go home. I know it's game seven with the World Series on the line, but this crowd is going to be insane because all the pressure is on the Phillies. They're at home from their home crowd. They got the big payroll. They got all the stars. They're playing the scrappy D-backs, as everyone likes to call them. Like, all the pressure is on the Phillies. I don't need the D-backs putting extra pressure on themselves. I don't need them overexerting themselves. Just maintain your composure. All the pressure is on Philly in this one. Have some fun out there. Lay it all out on the line. And if the D-backs can do that, I think there's an opportunity and a chance for them to win Game 7 ahead to their second World Series in franchise history. Now, that's it for this edition of the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Hopefully, it will be a happy podcast because tomorrow is also my birthday. So, hopefully, it will be a happy podcast talking about the D-backs heading to the World Series. What would be a better birthday gift than that? So, Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Thank you for making Locked On Dimebacks your first listen every day. Don't forget to catch every D-backs pitch on their hometown broadcast when you download the Sirius XM app and search up Diamondbacks. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Doses.